Good morning, everybody. It's Tom from Inspiration Mental Works. As you can see, my lovely hotel room here. I am traveling uh, this week. I'm not in my shop this week. I'm on, on the road for work and uh, for my day job. So I'm a little different this week. But I did shoot some video this weekend, and I wanted to get that out to everybody. Uh, at least some of it uh, came out OK. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was say uh, a thank you to, to everyone who's um, got tons of new subscribers. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad that people think that I have something uh, worth worth watching. And I'll continue to, to work at that and improve the videos. The other thing is I wanted to thank uh, the people who are uh, kind of behind the scenes supporting me. Uh, guys like Adam. You know, Adam uh, Booth has been great about uh, helping out, not just with his videos, but then also kind of behind the scenes, uh, giving me a little you know, punch in the arm here and there. So thank you very much, uh, Adam. I really appreciate that. If you have not seen uh, his videos, his uh, his YouTube channel is a bomb seventy nine. Uh, other video channels that I mean, most of you guys may have seen already, but uh, if you haven't seen those, uh, I'd recommend checking out uh, Tom Lipton. You know, from uh, Ox Tool, um, other guys that I've been watching for quite some time, uh, Keith Fenner has a great one uh, with Turnright Machine Works, uh, Jody at Welding Tips and Trip, uh, Welding Tips and Tricks dot com uh, has some great videos as well. So a little bit for everybody, depending on what you you like to do. If you like to weld, if you like uh, machine work, um, you know, there's lots of guys out there. I've recently been watching. Uh, Oh gosh, what is Tom? Another there's another Tom. I suddenly forgot his last name. Uh, from from Michigan, from Farmington Hills, Michigan, uh, has some great videos as well. Um, go Red Wings! I'm a Red Wings fan. So, anyways, uh, let's get to it. So in this video, I tried to uh, give to you a little bit of an update on how things are going in the shop, where the uh, upgrades stand with the uh, finger brake. Also I did a, an upgrade to my mini mill uh, which should improve its capabilities quite a bit. And then some of the woes that come along with having equipment. I have, you know, my plasma cam table is a wonderful piece of equipment and the, the people there are great too. But occasionally things go wrong and uh, right now I'm, I'm having some problems so I'll talk about that. And then lastly we'll talk a little bit about what's coming up. Um, I'm, I've got some projects in the works once I can get everything uh, back up and running and if I can I will include those as well. Good afternoon. It's Sunday. I'm out in the shop a little bit today and uh, I've got some good news and some bad news. Uh, the good news is progress on the shop has been coming along great. The, uh, I've got the shop press uh, assembled. Uh, the finger brake came in this week and I'm working on finishing that up. So I got a little bit of welding to do uh, today. I'll get that finished up. But uh, I am going to be on the road for a little while so there won't be much going on this week. Um, I'm just trying to get a quick video in today about where things are going and then um, some of the challenges that I've had pop up this week. So. As you guys saw in my last video, the water table's up and running. Um, it still needs some ventilation in there. I'm, I'm going to have to work something out on, on venting. Uh, so I'll, I'll work on that when I get back in town. But in the process of testing things out and getting things cleaned up, um, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what's happening, but I'm having some problems with my, my table. Let's let's go ahead and initialize it, and I'll, I'll show you what it's doing, and then we'll um, we'll go from there. And some of the troubleshooting that we can do. All right. So the first thing you do when you use these systems is you initialize it. It basically tells it to go back to the start location. All right. So as you guys can see, it's just jumping all over the place. Now the travel. Let's, let me go back into wide. So I'm going to go over and move some things by hand. That's okay. All right. So what you're seeing on the plasma cam, this is kind of the back side of it. So zero zero, when we use the coordinate system on this, would be up in this corner over here. 
And so when it initializes, it actually comes all the way over to this far corner. There's limit switches in here, right? On, on either side, there's limit switches. And so the way it's defined in the system, Z is your height. Right? So as it goes up and down, which is initialized right now, so it's putting a little bit of pressure in there. It's your height. Um, traversing across the system is your X. Front to back is your Y, right? So when I move everything by hand, Everything's nice and clean. Both sides are lining up fine. When I come across and move it, I'm not feeling any resistance, nor am I seeing anything like a, a chip. I thought maybe there'd be you know something in the gears, something along those lines that are that's locking it up. I even went so far as to pull the carriage completely off the gantry. Of course, it's called the gantry. Uh, so I pulled the carriage off. I cleaned everything. I cleaned. All of the um, the teeth, I lubed everything. I should get all my fingers. I lubed everything up, and you know, when I move by hand, I've got nice smooth movement. So I'm guessing it's an electronics thing. Um, I just replaced plasma cam. They, they, those guys are great about things. They sent me a new wiring harness um, a couple of months ago, and I replaced that uh, about a month ago. And you know, I've been cutting with it. Everything's been fine. And just randomly yesterday, when I tried using this thing, it went all over the map, just like you, you just saw it. It's just not controlling the position properly. So they've got, like I said, they've got some stuff for me to, to test. Um, so I'll go through, uh, go through all of that. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm going to be traveling, so I'm not going to get a chance to, um, to work with anybody on this one, I think, uh, for another week, which means for a week, the system here, the cutter's down which for me is the majority of what I do out here. Uh, so, a little bit of a panic, but um, we'll get that working again. All right, so one of the uh, things we're working on today is this little adapter piece here. Got it from the little machine shop. And it's actually a pretty nice little setup. For those of you who have small bench top mills like me, um, definitely a nice little setup here. Uh, it's to convert an X2, the SIG X2 style mill. Um, all I could afford at the time is to get into milling with something from, from Harbor Freight. It's not uh, something I prefer to do, but got to start somewhere. And it's been really good for uh, for small jobs and just you know to get the basics down for. Uh, for what it is to mill, right? I mean, not everybody's gonna start on a great big bridge port, and I have to admit, I am a little jealous of you guys. They're nice mills, but I tell you what, it's amazing how accurate you can get with this thing. So, this is the kit we're gonna be putting in today. You see all the different parts here. Uh, it says it'll take about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm not gonna bore you with all that, but I just thought I'd give you a quick shot of it. Okay, so this is my mill. Uh, it's nothing fancy, it's just a standard little bench top mill. Uh, but it is a nice little machine and it does a, a decent job. So what we'll be replacing today is this top plate here. We have to pop the, take the, the motor off. Um, we'll get into the, the spindle head here. Uh, replace this, get rid of the plastic uh, gears in there. This does have a low and high range. Right now the range on this one, it's an R8 taper, uh, but what it, it does is in low 0 to 1100, and then uh, in high speed, it's zero to 2,500 RPMs. The nice part about switching to this belt drive, other than getting rid of the cheap plastic gears, it's a lot quieter and it extends the range. So in low, it goes from zero to 1,700 RPMs, and in high range, it'll go to uh, 4,000 RPMs. So that should definitely extend my capabilities on here. Let me. Um, let me manage cutting steel just fine. Enough torque with that in low range, then in high range for uh, you know, aluminums and, and smaller cutter sizes. So it's been nice to have this thing. It's been a great uh, addition to the shop. Eventually I will um, convert this to CNC uh, when I can get myself a, a bigger knee mill uh, uh, for myself to use a manual one. This one will go into, into CNC. It can, they've got some pretty good kits out there to convert this thing. And then, um, you know, but one step at a time, right? So it's been a great, great learning exercise, and it's it's surprising how accurate you can get with with just this uh, 
you know, store-bought thing here. But anyways, I'll bring you back when it's all done. Okay. This is why we're doing this. See this? I mean, all right, so it's got some white lithium grease on it. But it's freaking plastic. And these things are loud. Straight cut gears. I mean, it just... And frankly, the first time you jam this underpowered machine up, it's going to snap this thing right off. So we're not even going to bother with this anymore. Just go away. These nice machined aluminum parts from now on. But I just want to give everybody a quick uh, view. I did get everything put together. Give you a quick tour here. You can see we've got the head in place. Got the tensioner here so you can change the two speeds. Um, if we fire it up, you can hear it and you can see it. So that's actually running 1700 RPMs now and it's much, much quieter. And looking at the spindle itself, everything looks beautiful. So I'm pretty happy. There it is.